Boom, be doom, da ding dee dee boom. Oh, loo loo, little loo loo, little loo loo, with freckles on your skin. Always in and out of trouble, but mostly always in. Using dad's name tag for the tail of your kite. Using mom's lipstick for the letters you write. Little loo loo, little loo loo, there's no one quite as smart. Doesn't matter what you do when you're doing it with your heart. Shiny girls are dancing, there's a sparkle in your eye. When can we look forward to your next surprise? What a surprise! Oh, the clock says 7.30, it's really after 10. Looks like Lulu's been repairing it again. Oh, you're wild, Why? you know it's true, Lou. And you're very hard to take. Little Lulu, we love you, Lou, just the same, the same. Little Lulu, we love you, Lou, just the same. for a quick room cleaning. First, there's the fast way. Bring everything that's making the mess to your best friend's room, and when it's time to clean her room, switch back. A faster way? Push everything into a big pile, throw a blanket over the top, and tell your mom it's a new beanbag chair. And everyone knows the fastest way. Shove everything into your closet. But if you do that, you better stay tuned for Lulu's tips for a quick closet cleaning. <laughs> Choosing a baby's name is tough, but not if you follow Lulu's name plan. First, decide what kind of kid you want, then pick the name. You want a tough kid? Name him Spike. A cheerleader? Name her Muffy. And of course, for a smart kid, Lulu. But please, don't name your kids because of what they're like as babies. I mean, who wants to go through life being called stinky? When girls get up in the morning, they have to shower, scrub, brush, floss, and blow dry. And boys, they just throw on some old dirty clothes and they're out the door. Mom says being dirty is in boys' jeans. Well, if you ask me, it's not just in their jeans. <laughs> it's on their shirts, too. A word of advice to all you parents about bath time. Kids work hard at getting dirty. It's practically a full-time job. So if you want us to wash away all our hard work, you'll have to do better than tossing in a couple of plastic boats and a rubber ducky. Come on, tear out that old bathtub and put in a bath pool. Can't you just see it? Bubble fountains. Wave machines, surfing, and dolphins. <laughs> then you never have to worry about getting us kids into a bath. You have to worry about getting us out. It gets so busy in kids' rooms at night, it's amazing we ever get any sleep. Just think about it. First, there are bed bugs trying to bite you. And the tooth fairy. At least she leaves money for our teeth. Then there's the sandman sprinkling sand in our eyes. Boy, if he went to my school, he'd be looking at three weeks' detention for that. And the boogeyman, who's there when your eyes are closed, but poof, gone when you open them. How's a kid supposed to sleep playing that game all night long? And even at Christmas, something called sugar plums dance on our heads. Parents, forget the nightlight. We need a traffic light. Parents think revenge is immature. It's always, Lulu Moppet, don't be childish. Or, Lulu, I'm very disappointed with you. It's never, nice going, Lulu, you really got Tubby back good. He'll be picking grass out of his shorts for weeks. Like, whatever happened to rewarding someone with a little encouragement? Instead, parents tell us to act grown up. Like, eat your broccoli. It's never, go park the car. Anyway, my mother tells me revenge is childish, and no one ever gets away with it. And then, she makes me wash the dishes for making a mess in the living room. Boy, my mom sure gets away with revenge. Except that she doesn't call it that. She calls it discipline. Boys are usually too shy to tell girls they like them. Which is weird, considering all the gross things they aren't too shy to do around us. So, here's how to recognize the signs. If a boy looks at you during a test at school, he likes you. Or, he wants some answers. If you ask a boy something and he looks at his shoes, he really likes you. 
or he stepped in something. And if he hangs around you going, he, 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 he likes you a lot. Or you should get away fast. But if he throws spitballs at you and puts a snake in your lunchbox, he absolutely adores you and he wants to get married. Or he's your brother. Ever wonder what grown-ups really mean when they talk? Well, wonder no more. It's all in the grown up ease dictionary. Ah, here's a good one. Oh, no, I couldn't possibly eat another bite means please keep filling my plate. And this one, I really must start exercising again, which means there, I said it. Now I don't have to do it. Oh, and this one's really sneaky. That's enough. You've had quite enough dessert. That really means, hee hee hee, go to bed. The rest is mine. <laughs> One time at a fancy restaurant, I got this really bad waiter. He asked if I'd like the chef's salad. Why would I want to share someone's salad, I asked. Don't you have any brains? And you know what? They did, boiled or stewed. Then I noticed that I had three forks. Well, I didn't want the waiter to make me share anything, so I swapped them all for dessert spoons and ordered a huge chocolate mousse so I could eat the body and save the antlers for the morning. Sort of like an Easter bunny. But what about your main course, the waiter asked me. When I told him I was best in math, he walked away. And he calls himself a waiter. He never even waited for me to finish my order. Lulu's top five excuses for why I didn't do my homework. Number five, my dog tried to eat it, but it was too tough even for him. <laughs> Number four, my mom tells my dad it's not good to bring work home with you, so I left mine at school. <laughs> Number three, homework, I thought you said housework. I spent all night vacuuming. <laughs> Number two, homework's done at home, right? So that's where I left it. And the number one excuse, I learned this from my dad, it's in the mail. <laughs> Going camping with your parents isn't exactly a picnic. It's always, we're only bringing the bare necessities. And they pack forks, knives, an electric cheese grater, and lawn chairs. I think it's amazing how many bare necessities they can stuff into a station wagon, but the least they could do is bring stuff a bear can use. <laughs> And speaking of bears, everyone knows you can't leave food out when you're camping because it'll attract bears. I've never actually seen a bear while camping, but in case I ever do, my dad said if I lie down and don't move, it'll leave me alone. And he should know. It works for him every Sunday when my mom wants him to do work around the house. I love going to visit my grandparents at their house because I get to watch my parents do all the things I usually do at our house. Like put out the garbage, weed the garden, clean up after the dog, and wash the car. But not me. I usually get to sit by the pool with Grandma, laughing at all the funny faces Grandpa can make with his teeth out. <laughs> the last time I was there, I noticed that parents do all the work and grandparents have all the fun. Hmm, work or fun? No contest. When I'm through being a kid, I'm gonna skip being a parent and go straight to being a grandparent. My mom wants me to learn how to play a musical instrument. She says, it's best if you start when you're young like Mozart. By the time he was four, he was a musical genius. <laughs> well, sure, but in his day, all the good TV shows hadn't been invented. Anyway, she told me to pick an instrument I'd like to play. Well, I thought about the piano, but nah, I'm always losing my keys. The French horn, I don't even speak the language. How am I supposed to play it? So I finally decided on the perfect instrument for someone who doesn't like practicing. The bagpipes. They're great because nobody can tell what you're playing, and they usually tell you to stop long before you're supposed to. Ever notice that no one's happy with the type of hair they've got? Like my mom. She hates her hair so much, she pays someone to fix it every week. And my friend Annie, she doesn't like her straight hair. She wishes it was curly. Me, I have curly hair, and I wish it was straight. And my dad, 
He's the only one I know who's got nothing to complain about. My friend Annie has a cat named Dash, because it has a dash of white at the tip of its tail. It's a nice cat, but I think it's a little weird in the head. You see, the last time I was over at Annie's, I saw Dash drinking out of the toilet. Annie said cats do that all the time because the water's cool in there. What I'm wondering is, how does Annie know that? Getting your parents to buy you a puppy can be tough, so here's Lulu's guide to getting a dog. Number one, don't ask for a dog. Ask your parents for a lizard, a boa constrictor, a tarantula. And by the time you get to fruit bat, they'll want you to have the cutest dog in the pound. Number two, tie a string around one of your stuffed animals and take it out for a drag around the block. This works best on a sunny Saturday when all your neighbors are out mowing the lawn. And if these don't work, pull out all the stops. Tell them you want a baby brother. Before you know it, that dog will be yours. The other day I had to wake up at five in the morning to go fishing with my dad. Why so early? It's not like the fish are swimming around going, holy mackerel, we're gonna be late for school. No, I think people get up early to go fishing because it takes so long to catch one. But that's because they're going about it all wrong. How can you catch something if you don't chase it? Think about it. A fish is just waiting around to be served a worm on a hook for breakfast? <laughs> Well, maybe if it was chocolate. Anyway, my dad says that you need lots of patience to catch a fish, because you got to be good at sitting down in the same spot for a long time. Hey, so that's what my dad's been doing sitting in front of the TV all these years. He's been training for fishing. My mother does these amazing exercises with her face in front of the mirror, because she wants to look younger, she says. Well, I don't know about that, but I think she's forgotten what she always tells me when I make faces. Lulu, if you don't stop, your face will stay that way. Or maybe she does remember, and she's looking for the way she wants her face to stay. <laughs> Ever wonder where babies come from? Well, I decided to find out and asked my mom where I came from. And you know what she said? Go ask your father. <laughs> so I did, and you know what he said? Go ask your mother. I guess they don't remember where I came from. So I asked Tubby, and at least he had an answer. Kinda. He said he's from New Jersey, and how's he supposed to know where I come from? Last time it rained, I wanted to go to a movie, but my mom was too busy to take me, so she told me to use my imagination and make my own fun. So I skated around the kitchen floor in my socks playing hockey. I had the puck, I took a shot, and broke a jug. And that's when Mom ran in and threw me out of the game. Then I piled up all the pillows and made believe I was a mountain climber. But an avalanche came down and broke a lamp. And that's when Mom ran in and chased me off the mountain. And then I was a spy on a secret mission, and I hid in the closet and yelled, Gotcha! when my mom opened the door. And that's when Mom lost it and took me to that movie. <laughs> Ever notice that grown-ups act pretty weird around babies? First, they get away with doing all kinds of weird things with their faces. I bet if they did that walking down the sidewalk, they'd probably get arrested. But what's even worse is the way grown-ups talk to babies. I once saw a mother lean down into a baby carriage and say, Gootsie, wootsie, snookum, wookums. I looked in and there was this baby just staring up at this lady thinking, I'm sure you're a very nice lady, but you're making no sense at all. So naturally, the mother said, How's my sweetie, weedy, poopy, whoopy? Well, if you ask me, if that's how parents speak to their babies, it's no wonder it takes them so long to learn how to talk. <laughs> Aren't feet weird? And toes bizarre. Not to mention ugly and... Ugh. Well, you get the point. I mean, you'd think that when they were designing the human body, they could have come up with something better than feet to put on the end. Something more fun. <laughs> like a bike. <laughs> I finally convinced my parents to take me to the amusement park the other day, and boy, was it great! We ate popcorn, pizza, and pink cotton candy, and then we went on the rumble, the zapper, and the twist. It was so much fun! I guess that's why they call it an amusement park. Funny, my parents didn't look too amused. They just looked sick. Today in class, the nutritionist said, you are what you eat. And you know what? I found out she's right. At lunch in the cafeteria, I saw our nutty science teacher eating nuts. And Biff Bentley, the big school show-off, was eating a hot dog. 
And then when I got home, my dad was in his usual spot on the sofa watching TV, but he was eating potato chips. And then Mom came in and told him he was a big couch potato. So then I started thinking that being what you eat can come in really handy. Like for my big math test tomorrow. Instead of studying, I asked Mom for something really special for dinner. Brains! Last week when our art teacher took us to a museum to see all the paintings, she said that a picture's worth a thousand words. Well, I saw one called Lady with an Apple. That's only four words. Some of the other paintings were worth more words than that, like very, 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 very weird and really, 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 really bizarre. But then it got so crowded, us kids couldn't see anything. Our teacher said it's because all these people came to see art. Well, I don't know if they came to see Art or Fred or anyone else. I think everybody just came to see the paintings of naked people. Finally, our class saw something that was only one word, but it was the most exciting thing we saw all day. It was called the exit. The other day, I was walking down the sidewalk with Tubby when, yow! He pushed me right into the street. I couldn't believe it. But you know why he did it? Because he didn't want me to walk under a ladder. It's supposed to be bad luck, he said. Well, that might be true, but if you ask me, it's worse luck to be run over by a truck. <laughs> Today in science class, we learned all about Neanderthal man. He was this fellow with scraggly hair, a huge sloping forehead, only one big eyebrow, and he walked all hunched over. <laughs> My teacher said he disappeared thousands and thousands of years ago, so I asked him, Hey, when did you get back? This is supposed to be a love story. Listen, he had a crush on her. She was swept off her feet. She fell head over heels. But in the end, she had a broken heart. A broken heart? How? Sounds like she should have ended up in the hospital. Last week, I could tell my parents were really excited about our trip to the zoo because they kept saying things like, turkey, nice jaguar, what a weasel, bunch of cows, and it's a jungle out there. Well, we never did make it to the zoo after all. Dad said there were too many animals on the road. Worried you're getting older and turning into a grown-up? Well, here's Lulu's surefire quiz to prove you're still a kid. Is your idea of a well-balanced meal A, fish, vegetables, and rice, or B, a cupcake in each hand? Do you use a knife and fork A, all the time, or B, only when someone's looking? Or when you get out of a bath, do the wrinkles A, go away after 10 minutes, or B, not at all? And when you brush and floss at night, are your teeth A, in your mouth, or B, in a glass on the sink? Oh, 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 oh,